Hello students, this is Ankit Joshi. I welcome you all on this new episode of Learn with Fun. So students, in this particular session, we will be focusing on what is this nth root of unity, what are the cube roots of unity, and what are their applications in the various parts of engineering. So let us start. So today's topic is applications of nth root of unity. Now students, it is a general perception among us that when we square one, we are getting one. When you when we take when we do the cubing of one, again we are getting one. So in the same manner, people think or students think that square root of one is one, cube root of one is one, fourth root of one is one, but that is not the case. Interestingly, when you take the uh, square root of one, you are having two values, one is plus one and another is minus one. Similarly, when you are going for the cube root of one, you will be getting one real root and two complex roots. Yes, one real root and two complex roots that you would have studied in your schooling days as well. So students, let's enter into this part. So here we wish to calculate cube root of one. That is one raised to one by three. Now what I'm doing here, 1 raised to 1 by 3, I am assuming it to be equal to x, x. So x is equal to 1 raised to 1 by 3. Now on cubing both sides, when I cube both sides, I will be getting x cube equal to 1. Now students, x cube equal to 1 is a cubic equation. If I bring all the terms to the left hand side, I will get x cube minus 1 equal to 0. So by using the factorization formula, a cube minus b cube formula, I have got two factors, x minus 1 and another factor is x squared plus x plus 1. So when I equate this first factor to 0, I am getting one real root that is x equal to 1. But when I equate this another factor to 0, I am getting the two complex roots of unity. So minus 1 by 2 plus minus i root 3 by 2. So in this way, we can say that we have got three, three roots of unity. Out of this one is the, one root is the real root and the other two are the complex roots. Now let us discuss some very important properties of these cube roots of unity. So cube roots of unity are generally denoted by 1, omega and omega square. Now students, since omega is one of the root, omega is one of the root of that equation. So omega is satisfying that equation. So it will be giving you 1 plus omega plus omega square, which is equal to 0. And since omega is one of the root, we can also write it as omega equal omega cube equal to 1. These are the two very important properties of cube root of unity. Now, the two complex cube roots of unity are denoted as omega and omega square. Omega is minus 1 by 2 plus i root 3 by 2 and omega square is minus 1 by 2 minus i root 3 by 2. Interestingly, when you square this omega, you will get this omega square and when you square this omega square, you will be getting omega. So on squaring any of these, uh, the other cube root of unity is obtained. Now, we want to see its view on the Argon plane. We want to see the view of the cube roots of unity on the Argon plane. Now students, let us say we are having the real axis as x axis and here the imaginary axis as y axis. Comfortable? Now, on this Argon plane, I am considering, I am considering a unit circle. So this circle is nothing but a unit circle. This unit circle means its center is at origin and radius is equal to 1. It means all the points on this circle are having magnitude 1. Okay, so only the phase shift will be there. So this is the one cube root of unity. This is the graphical representation of one. This is the another cube root of unity. This is basically the graphical representation of omega. Its angle with respect to positive x-axis will be 120 degree. And this is the third cube root of unity. And its angle with respect to positive x-axis will be 240 degree. Now students, this is omega. This one is omega square and this one is 1. So these are the three roots of unity called as cube roots of unity and its graphical representation. So one idea we have obtained here that 
हाउ टू प्लॉट दिस ट्यूब रूट ऑफ यूनिटी फर्स्ट ड्रॉ यूनिट सर्कल ठीक है एक यूनिट सर्कल ड्रॉ कर लेंगे आफ्टर ड्रॉइंग यूनिट सर्कल जस्ट डिवाइड द एंटायर रोटेशन ऑफ यूनिट सर्कल दैट इज थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री इन टू थ्री पार्ट सो यू विल गेट वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो द एंगुलर शिफ्ट बिटवीन द थ्री क्यूब रूट ऑफ यूनिटी इज वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री सो दिस इज गिविंग अस ए लॉजिक टू हैव द बेस फॉर एंथ रूट ऑफ यूनिटी आई विल डिस्कस विद दैट आई विल डिस्कस यू विद दिस कॉन्सेप्ट एज वेल now we are talking about nth root of unity so nth root of unity means all the roots will be having magnitude 1 and entire rotation of 360 degree is divided into n parts so each part will be having an angular shift of 2 pi by n radius understood now students i wish to discuss one very important example with you if i wish to calculate all the values of i to the power 1 by 4 how you are going to evaluate this so students i can be represented in terms of sin and cos so this can be written as cos pi by 2 plus i sin pi by 2 comfortable with this i guess you all understood this raised to the power 1 by in the very next step just add a rotation here 2 and 5 in this argument in this argument add an angle 2 and 5 this will make no difference now i am using a very beautiful concept of de moivre's theorem De Moivre's theorem says that cos theta plus i sin theta raised to the power n, then this n can be multiplied in the index. Then this index can be multiplied in the angle. So this one by four can be multiplied here. So two n pi can be written as four n pi plus pi. Two is the LCM and one by four, so it will become eight. I times sin. Once again, four n pi plus pi upon eight. Now, this will represent the different different values of i raised to one by four for different values of n. So, what are the values of n that you need to consider? It will be starting from n equal to zero and it will go up to three. N equal to zero, one, two, three. So, when you put n equal to zero, it will represent one root. When you will put n equal to one, it will represent another value of this. When you put n equal to two, it will represent another value. Or n equal to three, the last value. So in this way, all the values of this i raised to one by four can be represented here. The very important part is this i is again located on the unit circle, okay? And you are actually working on its fourth root. So this is how we evaluate it. Now, students, one more very beautiful application of nth root of unity is. solution of some higher degree equations suppose if you are having a higher degree equation x raised to 5 plus x raised to 4 plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0 so this equation can can also be solved using the concept of nth root of unity how so kaise ho so i am just multiplying it by x minus 1 so x minus 1 and the remaining part as it is x raised to 5 x raised to four, x cube, x square plus x plus one equal to zero. So by binomial theorem we can say that this is nothing but x raised to six minus one. So on solving it further we will get x raised to six is equal to one. So x will be nothing but one raised to one by six. Comfortable? In it means we are talking about the sixth root of unity. Understood? So sixth root of unity is the value of x which is nothing but the solution of this equation. so we will be getting all the solutions of this equation with the concept of this nth root of unity so all my dear students this x can this one can be written as cos 2n5 plus i sin 2n5 
raised to the power 1 by 6. Now, applying the concept of de Moivre's theorem, this 1 by 6 is brought in the denominator, cos 2 in pi by 6, pi sin 2 in pi by 6. This is in accordance with the de Moivre's theorem and you have to put the different values of n ranging from 0 to 5. Now students, when I, when I consider all these values, actually we will be getting the 6 roots, but this is the degree 5 equation, so it must be having 5 roots only, so one root will be discarded here, so which root we have to discard, so this factor we have introduced, this factor we have additionally introduced, so x equal to 1, this root should be discarded, so the root obtained for n equal to 0 should be discard, discarded, so ultimately you have to consider n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, in this way, by putting different different values of n, we will be getting the different roots of this equation. So, this was the concept of nth root of unity. Now, students, nth root of unity, in nth root of unity, actually what we covers? We covers the concept of cube root of unity, nth root of unity. When I say nth root of unity, I am targeting 4th root, 5th root or 6th root or any higher roots. Euler's rule is also utilized here. Yes, Euler's rule is the relationship between a complex number and the trigonometric sign and cos. We also utilize de Moivre's theorem and the argent plane. But after learning all these concepts, this can be utilized in various branches of engineering, in EC electrical, we go for Z transform, DFT, filter design, phasor diagrams and complex integration. So, nth root of unity has got some very important concept and very important applications ahead. So, that's all from my side, student. I hope this will help you, this particular, this particular session, this particular concept will help you in understanding the various other applications of engineering. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Hind.